So today what I have for you then is a video on Call of Duty Modern Warfare and specifically the multiplayer side of things, you know, just a video basically telling you guys, you know, is this game worth it just for the multiplayer? I know a lot of people play Call of Duty just for the multiplayer each year. Um, I haven't had a chance to jump into the campaign yet. Played a tiny bit of spec ops, but I had a glitch where my gun couldn't fire, so I couldn't really experience it. Um, and most of it, I have been playing the multiplayer and I've played a decent amount of multiplayer. I know how the game flows, how the guns feel, etc. Uh, so based off what I've had so far, basically a quick little video for you guys, basically saying, you know, is it worth getting it just for the multiplayer itself? So without further ado, hopefully you do go on to enjoy. Leave a like if you do, subscribe if you're new, and then let's jump into it then. So we're going to get into some positives and negatives about the multiplayer and stuff like that, and maybe sum it up all at the end. Um, and I will say early on here, there's a lot of positives that do outweigh the negatives, but some of the negatives you might not like. So there is also that. So let's jump into it then. The guns, the guns that we have in the game. I've used a variety. The gun I'm using the most at the moment is the AUG because I'm just trying to unlock all the camos on it uh, real quick just to see, you know, what the end camos look like and stuff like that um, for this. Um, and it's been fun. It has been fun using the AUG. The guns feel good to use. They're different compared to other Call of Duties, but uh, again, this is like a... Um, a positive and a negative in a way because me personally whenever i've played battlefield in the past and call of duty i've always said what would happen if you mix the two together battlefield style gunplay sort of but then also the arcade feel of call of duty and that's what modern warfare is in my opinion it's a mix between battlefield and call of duty uh, you know taking elements from each of the games and adding it into one and i must say i do like it i do like it the guns feel good to use it's different compared to old call of duties it's not the same thing we've had every single year um you know at least it's not exosuits or something like that you know when they've tried to be different in the past and we've had exosuits that wasn't received well but the difference with modern warfare and how they've gone for that sort of more realistic feel um, it's nice. It is nice. And back to what I was saying about me using AUG and actually going for camos. Camos is another thing here that I think is a positive in this game. There's a wide range of camos. There's so many different selections of camos. Um, you know, you could get a camo category called digital. You click on digital and then there's 10 different digital camos to unlock. There's also tiger um, or stripes, I believe it's called. And there's 10 different of those as well. There's like so many camos per one gun. Um, and they're not too much of a grind either because there's a lot of camos per weapon. They, of course, made them somewhat easier to get, but there is some that are kind of difficult to get at the same time. But because there's a big variety in camos, it makes you feel rewarded a lot of the time because you're constantly unlocking camos, constantly getting a lot of stuff for your guns and stuff like that. So that's one positive right there. Um, another positive, it's just a small thing, is, you know, we got daily challenges, always something to go for, always something to do for a bit of XP and stuff like that. Um actual whole challenge system itself for this game has actually been replaced before we used to getting challenges for titles and emblems and stuff like that but from what i can gather so far from playing challenges have actually been, been replaced by something called missions where it's a bunch of challenges all into one mission um i'm currently going for a mission which would unlock me a uh, certain sniper rifle and what these missions do it depends on what you're unlocking but you select a mission and you go for this mission and the mission will have 10 different challenges in it the current mission i'm going for the challenge is the part that i'm on i think i'm on like challenge five out of seven or something like that and basically what i have to do for this certain challenge to get on the next stage of this mission is i need to get three mercy i uh, know five merciless medals um and then i think the next one after that is to get um a, a 15 kill streak and stuff like that but basically at the end of this mission i'm gonna get a sniper variant if you will and the stats don't change or anything like that it's not something that gives you an advantage per se but it's like a pre-made weapon that has a different uh, look to it i believe um, it has certain attachments on it and the good thing about this is the first challenge uh, that you can actually select you can select all of them but the first one that actually comes up um, is a challenge for an mp7 now the mp7 i believe you don't unlock it for a while but i've completed the mp7 challenges this whole mission and you actually get to use this mp7 right at the start of the game instead of waiting to unlock the mp7 so once i've completed this sniper one if i don't already get the level for the sniper i'll be able to use that sniper before actually unlocking the sniper itself so i think that's really cool and these missions you know they get you a lot of xp well it's like old challenges but bundled into one whole mission you know there's like 10 challenges per mission and, uh, you know, you get a lot of XP from these as well. And at the end, you get a reward. So, again, it's that more rewarding thing. Keeps you playing. Keeps you, you know, having fun, I guess. Um, you know, grinding and stuff. 
It's, uh, it's quite cool. It is quite cool. Um, another positive that I could give you guys is it doesn't take too long to rank up on this game. Um, it's a decent pace, I found. You know, there's been some Call of Duty's in the past where it can take a while, man. Like, at the start, you want to, you know, create a class straight away and you have to get to level 4. Sometimes, you know, it, it's not often, but sometimes in the past, you'd maybe have to play 2 or 3 games before you're level 4. Um, but this game, you know, you can get to, like, level 6 or 7 in your first game. If you're lucky, maybe 8 or 9 um so it doesn't feel too slow at all i think it's a decent pace for leveling up um another thing is there's so many attachments per gun there is so many it's actually unreal there's like i I'd probably guess over 50 attachments per gun the other reasons of playing grind and rank up all the different weapons and stuff like that it's not just about you know ranking up your actual rank itself you can rank up your guns get camos get attachments and stuff like that and I know this is something that we're used to in previous Call of Duties, but what sets this one different from all the rest is the fact that there's so much more to get. There is, because before it was kind of a copy and paste kind of formula that they had going on. You know, you had your certain amount of attachments, your camos and stuff like that. But this one is completely overhauled. It's got so much more in this new Call of Duty. And I'm happy about it because sometimes you can play Call of Duty for the first two months and then be bored because you're basically, you got to max prestige, you've got camos, you've got most of the attachments. There's not really too much to do. And then eventually they'll add a thousand levels and stuff like that. But this, man, there's so much stuff to go for. There really is besides just ranking up your actual account itself. Um, but there is some negatives. There is some negatives. And the negatives aren't too bad. Um but we'll get into them so some of the maps are too big for 6v6 there's some maps that will play at 6v6 but really you should be playing 10v10 on them and it's quite annoying and i prefer if they were only 10v10 because they can feel really slow when you do get into a 6v6 lobby on some of the larger maps it can feel very slow and i wish these larger maps were just strictly you know locked behind the 10v10 playlists um is there isn't even a 10v10 playlist just a 10v10 modes that you can get into i wish these maps were locked behind the 10v10 uh modes because like i said with 6v6 they can feel slow um and speaking of maps it seems i don't know if it's because the game is only just released and people are getting used to the maps but it seems that most of the maps in this game i'm not gonna lie to you guys it does encourage camping gameplay but like i said that also could be because it's only just come out People are getting used to the game. People are getting used to the maps. You might think they're camping, but really they're not. But there's this one map. I can't remember what it's called. It's something palace. And basically in the middle, there's this building. And so many people camp in this building all game. They just stay in there all game upstairs. It's it's crazy. It's constant camp fest on that map. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one of the negatives. I mean, there isn't much negatives, to be honest with you. There is another negative I will get into uh, in just a second, but there's two more positives I do want to talk about. One, I believe this game is going to be having a free DLC system. So DLC maps and stuff like that that does come out, you will be getting those for free. So that's cool right there. You know, that's a positive. I mean, we have had things in the past where Activision have said something is going to be this, but then it turns out to be this and stuff like that um but because of all the crazy stuff that's happening with activision lately i think they want to stay in people's good books and i think the dlc will in fact be free um another false thing uh here that's a positive it's not necessarily much to do with the game um but you can have any game attack slash psn name that you actually want to have on this because this game runs off of your cod account not necessarily your playstation name or stuff like that so if your ps4 name was created in 2009 or whatever and you decided to have xx quitscope 6000 xx and you're not really liking it and you would like to have a different name at least for playing this cod anyway you can change it through your cod account my um playstation name at the moment is something like it's i nick i or something like that my real name's nick um and it's not the best and you know i wanted to have scully um you know the og scully just s-k-u-l-l-y and i can actually have that while playing this call of duty because i just changed it on my cod account and uh i am now scully in the game and it's uh, it's quite cool seeing that you know there's some there is some creative names i will say that some funny ones you see here and there but most of the time you do see some like, you know, really cool, just uh, slick looking names. Like, you know, you can see the name Steve or Paul or Dave or something like that, you know, just really normal looking names and no X's, no underscores or anything like that. It just looks cool to see those type of names on PlayStation because you rarely see those. Um, and this next one is a uh, double edged sword. It's a positive and a negative. This Call of Duty has crossplay, of course. Positive, you can play with your friends, you know, and if it's PlayStation and Xbox, that's a positive right there. 
But the negative side here then to crossplay is if you're a friend that's got a PlayStation, say if I had a PlayStation and one of you guys was on PC and wanted to play uh, a couple of games. The problem is if I was to play against PC players, PC players have an advantage and I'm not saying because I'm mouse and keyboard, I'm saying because they have one uncapped FPS, so they have that advantage. Two, they have, I believe, an FOV slider. And console is not allowed an FOV slider. So PC can see a lot more than what PlayStation can see. They have quicker frames, you know, and it's proven that quicker frames equals, you know, I don't know exactly what it is, but the more frame rate you have, it basically means that you can see people go around the corner easier or something like that. I watched a video, an educational video on frame rate before, and it basically showed that if you have a higher frame rate, there's more chance of you actually killing someone while they go around the corner when they have low frame rate because the person that has low frame rate on their screen, they would already be around the corner. But the person with higher frame rate on their screen, the person wouldn't be around the corner and they can kill them like that. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. But either way, the frame rate, um, you know, on uh, PC compared to console, it's a lot better. So they have that advantage. Like I said, FOV slider, build a view slider. They have that advantage too. Um, so there is that is a negative side of things. Um, but you know, if you really wanted to play with your friend on PC, I guess you'd just deal with it. But at the same time, come on, man. I, I don't know why. I'm, I'm a PC player myself. I don't play Call of Duty on PC. I'm playing it on PlayStation. Um, but you know, I don't understand why Call of Duty on PlayStation does not have a field of view slider. Battlefield had it. Why can't Call of Duty have it? And Battlefield's a massive game, a massive game. And that had field of view sliders. And uh, you know, there's, there's a ton of games on PlayStation that are getting field of view sliders and stuff like that. And Call of Duty still does not have a field of view slider on console. I really don't get that. I really don't. And they always say that it, there's a certain reason behind it and stuff like that. Me back in the day on Modern Warfare 2, uh, you know, stuff like that, um, you know, modded lobbies and stuff like that. You could change your field of view through modding the game and it didn't affect, you know, your FPS or anything like that at all. It didn't affect your performance. If anything, it made the game better. And, uh, you know, I don't know why they don't just add it in properly and don't leave it to modders. Of course, on PlayStation 4, you don't really see that. Back in the PlayStation 3 days, there was a lot of mods. Um, but still, I, I just don't understand why console still does not have a field of view slider. It baffles me. It really doesn't. But there you go then. There's some positives and negatives on the multiplayer. And uh, this is where we sum it all up. And based on those positives and negatives, do I think that this game is worth buying, uh, you know, at this moment? You know, is it worth buying at this moment? Or do I think you should wait and see if there's any changes that happen to the game? My answer to you is yes. This is a Call of Duty that I've you know been playing a little bit recently and uh well i wouldn't say a little bit i'm playing quite a lot uh and i will say that it's one of the quality duties for a long time um that i've actually had a lot of fun playing at the very start black ops 4 and some recent cards i'll play it at the start i think eh, it's okay but it's just cod you know it's just cod it's not really fun there isn't much you know that gives me an incentive to play it doesn't really have that oomph behind it but this cod there's something about it, man. There really is. There's something about this COD that I really like. And I'm seeing a lot of other people on social media and stuff like that saying the same things. It is, you know, it's bringing back the Call of Duty scene. I wouldn't say it bring it back to its top form like it used to be, but it definitely is bringing a lot of people back to the Call of Duty scene because, you know, this is a good COD. I do think it is a good COD. And hopefully um, if it, you know, keeps going and keeps this uh, positive thing behind it, hopefully we can be in for a good year for Call of Duty. There you guys go. That is uh, my whole video on it then. Do I recommend it? Yeah, sure. I do recommend it. Um, but there you guys go. That is the video. Hopefully you have enjoyed. Leave a like if you have. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Comment down below your thoughts on this Call of Duty. What is your thoughts on the multiplayer itself? And you know, this is a multiplayer themed video. So if you can stick it to multiplayer, you know, you can tell your thoughts on other stuff in the comments. But uh, mainly this is, of course, a multiplayer themed video. So if you can tell me your thoughts on the multiplayer, that would be massively appreciated. I think it's really good. Like I said, I do recommend it. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching if you did up to this point. And I'll see you guys on the next video.